left, left, right, balance. Where's my 20 watts? Why the right side? It's your it's testing, testing protocol. protocol. It's invalid. It's invalid. No, it's not. It's not. It's fine. You didn't, you didn't update, update the firmware. the firmware. I did. It was the latest. It was the latest firmware. We're establishing, We're establishing a working group to look into this. We'll get back to you soon. It's been months. It's been months. <gasps> 2019 has been what I would call a nightmare in getting power meters through the Llama Lab. At last count, I have no less than 20 power meters that have come and gone through the Llama Lab for various reasons. Testing, reviewing, providing feedback, firmware updates, more testing, more feedback. That also includes the Shimano-based power meter report, which took a lot of my time in investigating what's going on there and discovering that those units aren't quite what is sold. That's a rabbit hole I hope not to revisit, but on topic for today is Quark. Let's get straight into this. Quark was a company with origins in Australia back in 2006. They're now a US-based company, having first shipped their power meter in 2008. My history with Quark goes back quite some time. I've used the Quark S-Works Spider power meter on my road and time trial bikes for racing and training for years and years. In fact, I still own them. And my wife still has one of the older Ant Plus only Quark units on her road bike today. Those things have been reliable and accurate. Two things you need from a power meter. Fast forward a few years and the Llama Lab with testing, power meters, trainers, power accuracy and everything in between. I've been keen to get my hands on some of the newer units from Quark, including the latest revision, the dub version with Magic Zero to see how it stacks up. In recent times, I've been using the Favero Asio Maduro power meter pedals as a good baseline. They seem to provide good, accurate numbers as has been echoed many times online by other users. What I've been searching for is a spider or crank based power meter that provides the same level of accuracy and reliability. And based on the smile that I've got, I think we've found some and you'll find out why when we dive into the details and the data. Over to the technical specifications of the unit that I've been riding, which is the Quark D0 Dub Power Meter Spider. This unit comes in either a 110 or a 130 BCD, depending on the chain ring size you choose. I'm riding the 130 edition. It has dub crank compatibility from 165 through to 177.5 length, dub bottom bracket, obviously, which stands for durable unified bottom bracket. It's a new standard. Hopefully one standard to rule them all. We shall see. The unit that I have is a 28.99 mil spindle, nearly a 29 millimeter spindle. Transmits in Bluetooth and Ant Plus. Uh, no cadence magnet required. The Quark D0 has 10K temperature compensation. I had no idea what that meant. So a little Googling later, and I found out that it has 10,000 data points used for temperature compensation. So if you're riding outdoors at zero degrees and you ride into a 20 degree weather pattern, then it should still be accurate. The battery in the Quark D0 is a standard CR2032 available anywhere coin cell battery with a 200 hour battery life. They do list power balance, but I'd call it more of a pseudo left right. It's only one power meter. It does measure both left and right, but knowing exactly where that left right split is on the pedal stroke is a best guesstimate. It does okay. For true left right, pedal based power meters are probably the most accurate there. They list Omnicel, which allows you to swap chain rings without affecting accuracy, two year warranty, IPX7 waterproofing, power accuracy of plus or minus 1.5% and Magic Zero, which is a recent addition to Quark D0 power meters, which allows it to calibrate on the fly. This is a whole video in itself, pretty cool stuff. I'd have to say this is one of the best innovations added to power meters in 2019. And finally, all firmware updates are done via the SRAM Access app, which I believe they call the digital wrench, the way you connect to it and can configure everything. On the pricing, the Quark D0 Dub Spider price is listed at 599 US, but you need more than just the Spider. The crank set, which is carbon, comes in at 381 US. You'll also need a bottom bracket too, that's between 38 and $50 US and you'll need chain rings. It's weigh in around about $189 for 5339. So all up, the total price of this unit, you're looking at around $1,200 US. It's definitely not a budget power meter, but it doesn't act like one either, and that's important. Okay, to the all important unboxing, building and installation of the D0 power meter. The 
calibration certification sticker in the box. The spider itself and the part we all love, peeling that plastic off. So shiny. On the scales here for the spider, weighing in at 147 grams. Over to the carbon cranks, 172.5 mil version. Pedal washers. Cranks weighing in at 330 grams. Oh, and the washers, 331. 332. Okay, on to the chainring set that I have. Now these are the five bolt hidden bolt version. They still will work. Not the optimal ones for this chain set. But we can get them set the right way. So pulling them off the current spider. Job done. And installing the spider onto the dub crank set here with the eight bolts, torquing them up as per spec in a cross pattern and on with the chain rings. Now, those watching closely might note that I'm installing these incorrectly the first time. But they are torqued up correctly and I do go back and change them later on. But for the weight, looking at 490, 676 plus 2 grams for the pedal washers. The bottom bracket weighing in at 66 plus the spacer, 68 grams. Not too bad. Now here's the correct installation of the chain rings. You can see there it says point this way for the non-hidden bolt version. And they do have the ramp pins in the correct spots. The only thing is I have the drop pin on the other side of the chain ring. I'll get other chain rings, but these are just fine for what I need. Okay, onto the bottom bracket extraction from the giant TCR. Whack, whack, job done. In with the dub bottom bracket. Hopefully this is the one and only bottom bracket I'll ever need to install on the bike. In and the part we all love, Speed City. All right, very, very straightforward process getting the dub bottom bracket installed and looking pretty schmick. Installing, straightforward, crank goes on, torqued up nice and tight and the pinch bolt on the other side on the tension is sorted. Onto the Tax Neo, onto the Wahoo Kicker, and onto the Saris H3. This thing did get a fair run for its money indoors, but not only indoors, outdoors. Sunshine, happy days. As always, here we are at DC Runmaker's Analysis Tool where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how things stack up together. First up, standard Llama lab test. Let's dive straight into it. Today, what I was using is the Dacioma Duos, the Quark D0s, and the trusty Neo 1. Brand new chain, brand new cassette, brand new chain rings. Look at this, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, diving straight into everything here. Uh, 208, 206, 203, within a few watts all around. So I'm not even gonna bother digging into that section through there. It's just how things should be. Jumping over to the Sprint, uh, not too bad in the Sprint with the two on bike power meters. The Neo a little laggier, but overall not too bad. Over and unders, all pretty good. Again, the on bike power meter is a little bit spikier. This is unsmoothed, as we expect. That's all happy days. 264, 266, 259. And then into a short, hard hill effort, just to really give it some beans. And once things stabilize, it's all looking pretty good there. So Llama Lab Test passed for power. Looking at the left-right power data, this is where the Quark D0 does that pseudo split in the middle. That's best guess of where 
left to right should be. And overall, what we have here is 88, 89 on the Asiomas and 9186 on the Quark D0. So they pretty much cancel each other out with a few watts here and there either side. I'd probably trust the Asioma duos more than the Quark D0 because it is two independent power meters. It definitely knows how much it's doing absolute. Whereas the D0 could be either side it'd get. It's still pretty damn close though. Scrolling down to the cadence indoors and we have overall 75, 75, 74. Cadence is all good. And the overall stats from the unit. So 179 versus 179 versus 174. Weighted power, the normalized power, 237, 238, 231, a little lower on the Neo, just by just a smidge. Max power, 1208, 1181, 1189. Very, very close. Everything else there is happy days. Indoors, that is a 10 out of 10, or very, very close to it for the Llama Lab. Next up is an outside ride, around two hours on the pedals. And again, overall average, 194, 194 up against the Asioma duos. Okay, diving into the data just because. And we have 268, 266 within two watts up and down here. A lot of variance out on the road, a lot of other vibrations and other factors coming into play with the starts and stops and the accelerometers going faster and slower on almost every pedal stroke. Those things hold up together just beautifully. So that's all good. Uh, rolling into town here with a bit of a faster ride. 216, 214 with some ups and downs. That's all good. Into a very short sprint in town and the Quark D0 is a little higher than the pedals. I do need to dig into this a little more, swapping the pedals out with a few other sets. So I was surprised to see the Quark D0 a little higher there. Could it be the pedals under-reporting? That's something I do need to dive into, but I will be swapping those out and having a look. But Overall, pretty damn good once it stabilizes. Into a solid 10 minute steady state effort, rolling into town with a beautiful tailwind today. We have 258 versus 260 within a couple of watts there. All tracking very well with a lot of variance in power and speed out on the road too. That's looking good. And my final test is the out of the saddle heaving on the bars, really putting pressure sideways on the power meter. We found some power meters like their pressure put straight up and down on the pedals but that's not really how we ride in all scenarios. Sometimes we're sprinting with the bike, really flex side to side. So this final test that I do is around 550 watts out of the saddle, really reefing it side to side. That test is done just here and bam, we are good. For completeness, let's look at the other stats here as well from the outdoors where things are a little more random than indoors. So cadence for that 10 minute steady state, uh, 90 RPM versus 90 RPM, cadence, Good. Finally, for the overall stats from this outside ride where things, again, are a little more random than indoors, 193.99 versus 194 for power, 241.86 versus 239 normalized. Max power, it's probably the only discrepancy I saw in this whole testing range. So 110 watts there for that single outside sprint. I need to do more sprints to know exactly what's going on there, maybe with a few different pedal sets as well. Um, everything else there, average cadence was within a few RPMs. You might get a few of those depending on the starts and stops. But look, overall, as a whole, with all the history that I have in 2019 testing other power meters, that thing is brilliant. So my conclusion, it just works. And that's how it should be. It passes the Llama Lab test both indoors and out. And I'd have no issues at all using this power meter as a reference baseline to compare other power meters and smart trainers too. The catch being is it's not as easy to install as a pedal-based power meter system, but there's a few upsides as well. It's just the one power meter, not two independent power meters that have to be both charged and accurate and zero offset and updated. It's just the one single power meter. The one single battery is a massive upside and it's a standard CR2032. You're not having to look for that proprietary USB charger in the mix of things in your kit bag or even forgetting it while you're traveling. You can just drop anywhere into a store pick up one of those batteries and away you go. It's a toolless installation of the battery as well. The crank spider on a bike is in a more protected area than pedals, which will appeal to some people too. There's no issues on this unit with pedal compatibility. You can run road, mountain bike, you can run Shimano, speed play, whatever you like. People do get attached, literally, to their cleat types and don't want to change. So being able to use your pedal type with this power meter is also a big upside. So there we have it, my take on the Quark D0 Dub Spider Power Meter. Two words, that's all it needs. Happy days, that thing just works. As always, if you've liked this video, give that thumbs up some watts down below and hit subscribe to support this channel. It's much appreciated. Thanks for watching.